welcome back to the Montula podcast. I know usually I have Jill and Sonia with me, but today I'm being joined by my blog sisters from Noir and Nerdy, Joy from Brooklyn, and Kalila. Welcome. <laughs> um, so we are here to talk about the hopefully, maybe season finale of the one to live. <laughs> so let's get into it. <laughs> Um, so I guess we can start with that amazing first. <laughs> it was again so tasteful. Like yeah. I don't know, they've yeah. mastered the um the balance between tasteful and absolutely romantic and just mm -hmm. it, I've never seen a um a scene like that before. Because usually, especially now, like everything is so raunchy and out there and almost borderline vulgar. So to see something, see so little, but then see so much, I don't know. I think, you know, they do, they, they're really good at that. I'm not sure. Was it the same director from episode four on this one or no? He did three, Slovis did three and four and then Stratis, Stratazemus did five and six. I don't know. I don't either way, way. Both of them ate on those, on don't those. Don't give me a line. I was not looking at them credits. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was not looking at the not credits. Not gonna lie, it definitely wasn't. <laughs> I, was I didn't even hear the voiceover at first. After I didn't hear the voiceover when it first started. I was like... I was watching on my phone trying to slice them out the way. Oh, we're starting <laughs> like this? Mind you, like, leading up to, like, all of the episodes watching, I didn't have, like, the nervousness with this one. And again, I had no doubt that... Um, Michonne and Rick were surviving, that they were getting home, that they were reuniting with their kids. I had no doubt that that was happening. But even still, like the whole way, my heart was just pounding. Mm -hmm. Stomach is like bottomed out, just nervous, just like, oh my God, what is going to happen? Like, how is this going to be closed out in this one episode? Like completely trusted it, that it would be. But just like where it was going to go was just... Oh, and then for you, it to start with that scene, I was like, oh, they're trying to kill us. <laughs> trying to like, kill us. And I felt like the vibe, like the love scene vibe in this one was such a different vibe from the love scene that we got in episode four. Definitely. But they were both amazing in just two completely different ways, though. Yeah. No words. Uh, yet again, no words spoken. Nothing but looks exchanged. Yeah. That was such a talent. And that's always been Rick and Michonne's story. It's always been about this connection and a conversation that they can have with just looking at each other. And yeah, it just makes you feel like a voyeur. Like, should I be here? Like, I'm going right? to like, <laughs> like, Oh, I feel like such a creep right now. Like, I shouldn't even be watching this. this like, shouldn't I shouldn't be watching this. Like, this is a level of intense love that I'm like, oh, 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 let me right. turn away, but also like, let me, I'm a peak and right. <laughs> well, I was just about to say, I have to like watch it through, <laughs> like watch it through your fingers almost because it's like, oh wow, mm -hmm. like just they're just laying it all out, all out there on for us, and even with the um the voiceovers as the the cameras absolutely painfully slowly panning to them you can like you feel the build up and then it cuts to them in the woods which i wasn't expecting it was jarring it was bright and i was like oh, mm -hmm. oh no and then i'm nervous because they're splitting up and they're going their separate ways and they're talking about their plans to you know to to infiltrate the crm for rick to get the echelon briefing for michonne to get jadis's dossier and you're just like nervous the whole time because you know that now they're going back into the belly of the beast basically yeah and you don't know she said what did michonne say if i can get, get be gotten back to is that what she said yeah. that and then they were just very like calm about it almost when they when she said that i was like oh like they're for real like they're going all out on this like they're stopping them no matter what i was like mm -hmm. yeah this is this is this is about to be an intense 55 minutes yeah and like Joy and it's said, just so much sorry here oh it's okay i was just gonna say like you said you know we all knew we had the faith like nothing horrific was really gonna happen to them but i was to the point where i was like i just know they're gonna have to like 
fight multiple people and really go through a bunch of BS again. And like, no, like, just, just let them go. <laughs> Look, don't fight it. Just let them bomb y'all and go. <laughs> <laughs> just give in and die. Like, just everybody just lay down on the ground and just let the bomb come. <laughs> just give in Mm -hmm. but you know it's always in the you know especially us being in the fandom that there's always these times that we have to like explain things to people parts that they missed and there's so much storytelling that just happens in those few moments of just the camera slowly slowly panning up so we know that they're we saw in the last episode that they flew off after uh barry and jada's so Rick said that they would have to stop at a few jump points to make it back. Right. So we know that somewhere along the way, they found some love nest, some place. They're still eating the noodles. They're still right. drinking the li- Like they're still with each other, even though they know that they're preparing to go off to war. Right. And it's just that level of like intensity in it that it's like, we know that we have this big mission to go, but we're still going to stop and have that moment to connect with each other. Right. Because they didn't go through all of this to find each other to just not enjoy any spare moment that they could have. Of course, they're going to make the moment of make the most, excuse me, make the most of every single moment that they can take, especially for what they're about to do. I'm trying to think what happened right after that, because I got stuck on that love scene and I don't. (laughs) Rick comes to the gates and um, Pearl is like, oh, like she's like, oh, snap, you know, (laughs) you're alive. And uh, he go and he goes to get the the briefing from Beale, who's out there. And he said he never even did his six years. He just yeah. became a citizen, which I'm not surprised if he was there from the beginning. I'm sure those are rules. You know, he's probably grandfathered in. No pun intended. And the whole conversation, I can't, I, I, I can't help but wonder, like, did Beale get any type of vibes, or was Rick really just selling it? Because I was like, I don't know. I felt like the whole time, maybe because I watched. You know, I have more information than Beale does, obviously. But Rick was giving vibes of, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> like, yeah, like, the whole you're time, not for this world, sir. I was live tweeting, and the whole time I'm like, oh, Rick is getting pissed. And right, then, like, they, you're you're the <laughs> yeah, and they would switch the scene, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, oh, Michonne is getting pissed. <laughs> like, they both sitting there listening to nonsense, getting more and more pissed by the second. And I'm like, and all it was doing was just building anxiety in me. Yeah. Because when, when Michonne went into that room, I was instantly taken back to when she went into the governor's apartments. And I was like, mm-hmm. 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 This is, it's about to it's about to go down. And she was tearing that room up because I knew Jadis wasn't going <laughs> to give her the actual location. What a bird. Yeah. Because why you couldn't tell her it was in the cat. But anyway, after her room gets tossed I'm, and I hear the sidebar, who just comes into somebody's room? Just because you, because the paper knocks up against something. Let me just break in, like. Yeah. But you know what? It kind of goes into what Bill says later about how they were planning on enacting martial law. So oh, right. No whole, freedoms. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like, no, no freedom for anyone. Freedom. Exactly. Which is so, that's so disturbing. Mm-hmm. And they're probably all just okay with it. It's regular for them because they're, they're brainwashed. Yeah, because remember, right. all of the military, they're all bees, with the exception of, like, Rick, exactly. for the most part, and maybe, like, some of the um, officers that were there at the very beginning, because, again, like you said, grandfathered in, and you came in in that original, um, that initial, you know, influx into the community, that that was the always the thing for me with the CRM that was going to be an issue with the A's and B system, that you started this and you obviously wouldn't have implemented that from the beginning. That's something that came in later on. But then on top of that, you have um, people who were kids when this started. Right. And this time span of the since the fall, they're young adults now. What do you do with those people? Do you go through and weed them out? And so I, I, that's why I feel like Bill's plan was to enact martial law because there was no way to control the people who had grown up and become A's in the process from the fall to after. And so they didn't want to, I guess, systematically go through and kick people's doors down and drag the A's out of their homes. So they're like, oh, okay, we'll just lock everyone down. Right. 
and then it was too hard for them also to figure out who who was the A that was slipping by, who was a, a you know B plus. Because it couldn't just was, be them. Those yeah, three. who was yeah who was a B plus that was becoming an A minus or like. you know. <laughs> So it was like, let's just lock everybody down because we don't got time to be trying to root out and have the, you know, them sit here and, and ask them these questions. This makes me think of an interesting kind of tie-in question. Do you think any of the Walking, uh, the Walking Dead, uh, any of the World Beyond crew would have been considered A's? Oh, yeah. I think so. Considering, I mean, just, what did they do? They they left Omaha to go where to Portland. Yeah. So I'm just saying that alone, kids who have never been outside of the walls before deciding to take on a journey like that, mm-hmm. like alone basically. And to do what they did, I feel like it's, 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 it's a vibes for sure for me mm-hmm. because that's a lot. And there's probably people who would look at them like, Oh, y'all are crazy. That's not happening. Like we're not doing that. So I would think that they're giving at least, inklings of an a they're young so you know yeah but it's definitely giving each one of them have a qualities in their own way stylus corduroy suit boy who is my favorite elson yeah. yes he tore that up he tore that up <laughs> yeah even and the sisters also oh, it right, was just right. in different directions so for hope was immediate, like, A, like, she was like, I'm not with the shit. <laughs> like, right. I don't have time for this. Yeah, she, right. the one with the sign ready on day one, that was killing me. <laughs> <laughs> she said, let me, let me show you what I'm about, actually. No fear of repercussions. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think Hope, it just took her that she was an A, but I feel like probably because of her sister's stronger personality, her father being a scientist in the lead, that Maybe she fell back a little bit. And then when we get to season two is when she finally says, okay, now we have to, you know, cause she tried in season one with her like, yeah, we're going to go do this. And I was like, girl, no. <laughs> oh no. That's what, again, when people talk about um, world beyond season um, one and two, and they talk about the difference between you suddenly pick up in season two and the kids are all, ninjas and stuff and i'm like no i needed that i absolutely needed it because another season of twwd meets stand by me i couldn't have done it it was but when you think about it it makes sense like the the walking dead show was kind of like that too where everyone was struggling with one walker at a time right Mm -hmm. and then we come you know season two and everybody's like ha ha yeah we kill all mm-hmm. walkers. Yeah. Well, it's like you know, not that much time happened between these seasons where they're sorry, I was just letting that car go by. Where they're <laughs> um, you know, picking up all these extra skills and we're seeing them turn into like ninjas and swordsmen, like mm-hmm. Jerry was a freaking swordsman. Yeah. Jerry wants <laughs> to be played with. Um, so and that's, you have literally nothing else to do. There's no cell phones. There's no tablets. There's no TV. You have nothing else to do but train if that's what you want to do. So yeah, it does make sense that after a few months out in the world with walkers and assholes trying to kill you all the time, yeah, they, they <laughs> yeah. better learn how to fight. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you better get out, get, a, get ready to go. Because especially if you're talking all this tough talk and you're ready to go on missions... Right. You better be re- prepared. Mm-hmm. Right. And which leads into Beal maybe not being that good at reading people as he says, because maybe more A's than we think slipped through only because I'm sorry, but there's the vibes that Rick was, Rick was giving by the time he got into that office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did you not see that coming? Mm-hmm. Like, or, That's- you know, I don't know. To me, it was just seeming like, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe Beal's just ready to, maybe he's just ready to go. Like, maybe he's just tired or maybe he's just, Okafor's gone. He sees that, um, he, he said to Rick, what, 14 years? They, that humanity has 14 yeah. years left. He's like, I ain't gonna be here anyway, so. He's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, I ain't gonna be here anyway. He's like, let's like, just start the stuff, because I'll. <laughs> I'm trying to enjoy these last few years I've got, actually. So I'm just trying to find someone to take the t- take the mantle. I'm hoping it's you now that Okafor is gone, because Pearl clearly mm-hmm. isn't going to be. Well, maybe, 
Pro was brainwashed a little too easy for me. All of the years and years and years of being trained by Okafor and Beale flipped her in one briefing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Okafor's death contributed to that, perhaps. It was just okay. it was just jarring. She was all on board for Okafor's mission. And then you know one what, that's brief- what I was like, honestly, I don't think that she was really actually all on board for Okafor's mission. Because remember right. when she was just saying that. Rick after about mm-hmm. you know like you spoke for me don't speak for me like right you know. she definitely said she definitely said that she yeah. said not we yeah very mm-hmm. quickly which and like you guys theory was that she actually was never a, um a a in the first place. yeah but you know either or she maybe she's just a different type of a but it's just i don't but i don't think an a would have been okay with what beale said Mm-hmm. And I think that's that that's the thing. Like there was nothing okay about what he said. No real A would be going would go for anything like that. Oak Four immediately didn't go for that. He got the briefing and said, Oh, okay, I need to start building a team. <laughs> like I need to mm-hmm. find other like minded people because we need to change it. No more A's and B's. So Oak Four or maybe it was Oak Four who was mistaken in picking, you know, his team. Well with one person anyway. He definitely picked right with Rick because he carried out the plan. <laughs> Well, I said, you know, honestly, I'm like, there would be different levels. There would be different A's because just because you're an A and you're a leader doesn't mean that you would care about humanity. So there's definitely people who are leaders who are just assholes. and Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could still fall under that umbrella and be an A, but just not, you know, one that is about leading in a positive light. So... But with with her, it really does give that she was just a B because we know also from our perspective, her conversation with with Rick, she tells him that she had already given up on the boat before Okafor comes to get her. Then we also have the fact that Bill was able to flip her with the briefing so quickly. Which was so disappointing. Yeah, her being distraught when... Okafor and was was killed and her thinking that Rick was gone also that also shows that she was always looking for someone to lead her she was always looking for someone to lead her she had got used to that having been in the military before that like that's the type of um, environment where they purposely break you down like in your training your basic training so that they can build you back up in the direction that they want you to be in so yeah she was already full on in that she was just going to follow whatever. You know what else I was thinking about? So they're sending these operatives out there to be undercover, which I'm sure we've all watched plenty of cop shows that portray and let us know that it's not an easy thing to do to live undercover. So they're living undercover in a zombie apocalypse all these years in these other communities, right? but you kill all your A's. So you're sending B's out into these communities to spy mm-hmm. for you who are just going to become a part of the community and probably fall some fall in love with somebody and, and who cares about your plan at that point because mm-hmm. you killed all the A's. So who's going to, who's left with the strength to follow through and what you sent them out there to do? Yeah, exactly. Because we saw Huck wavering. Mm-hmm. Right. She was struggling. They don't so that like kind of goes into the, like at the end where people were saying like, oh, there still needs to be more CRM because, you know, like you said, that there's still embeds that are out there mm-hmm. in these communities. But like you said, that most of them were bees that got sent out in the first place. Once they find out that the CRM is crumbled and like you said, they depending on the length that they've been in whatever community they were in, that'll they'll just crumble from that and just like, oh, okay. I mean, I guess... I feel like anybody who knows why Elizabeth Kublik is locked up is probably dead now. So she oh might get released. Right. <laughs> there is that. And then Beale's son, I guess. They were they were talking about him too. That's another loose end. Between that, the 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 plants that Beale has and um Elizabeth potentially coming out if that's you know if anybody was thinking about that if that's on the table which i didn't even think about that which i was like actually i had thought that like is elizabeth got killed because remember earlier in world beyond when she says to the was one of the other soldiers that wavered 
and she sent him to the health and welfare complex. And then later on, you saw that he was a walker. Yeah. That he was one of the test subjects. So when she got sent to the health and welfare center, I assume that that's what happened with her also. You think they really, I mean, I guess, but I just feel like once someone gets to that top brass level, they might want to spare them. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. And then also remember, we at that point, they had lost the sciences. They lost Layla. So would there have been anybody left to experiment on her at that right. point? True. So also, she could still be there. That damn Jeanette reminds me way too much of Elizabeth Kubrick. Mm-hmm. And them trying yeah. to use walkers as weapons. Very much. Their whole setup to me is just very CRM style. Very from the outfits like, to the to the way they operate, it's very CRM. I thought that the first time I saw it, I said, "Ooh, CRM crumbs." Yeah, because that's what it was giving to me. I think with Elizabeth, we got to see a little bit more of her conflict with it, and we haven't gotten to see that with Gannett yet. You know, there was that one little conversation with Laurent where he calls out like that she had some pain and she Mm -hmm. like fractured for a second and then pulled it back together so we'll probably get some more of that in um season two of daryl dixon but um yeah you know so i was like again (laughs) when rick is back and he's walking down the hallway with Pearl and she's just like, oh, you know, like, oh, like, yeah, like, I can't wait until you get the briefing. I'm so excited. I'm like, then when you find out what the briefing is, you're like, ma'am, you're a psychopath. Yep. <laughs> Especially yep. I'm thinking about parts where she's like, you didn't hear what I hear. You didn't see what I saw. Mm-hmm. And it's like, lady, are you serious? Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you, and I know y'all haven't been here, but I mean, for like, six episodes now I've been saying like no she's not a good person like Mm -hmm. and Jill's been like no I think you know maybe she heard the the briefing and um it scared her and she's not really in I'm like no she believes in that like she believes Mm -hmm. in it and that to me shows the whatever they said to her I know it was horrible that's what I was saying before and she's down she's fine Mm -hmm. It don't matter what they said to her. She's okay with it. Yeah. That is B behavior. Especially because we know, and she knows that Rick is moral. Mm -hmm. And so for her to come to his room to have that conversation, that would have been the only person she could have trusted to say, hey, it's crazy. He would have been the only person she could have trusted to say, like, I'm not really with this. Like, she could have came there and doubled down on Okafor's plan and said, Okafor's plan, like, you, Rick, you ain't see the stuff, but Okafor's plan, we absolutely need to do it. She could have came with that. She didn't even have to explain it to Rick or anything else, and she knows that he would have went along with that. Um, so for her to come there and keep saying, like, oh, you you never seen what I saw. Mm-hmm. You don't know what I know. <laughs> Drinking the man's liquor up and stuff, and mm-hmm. then they requesting that he salute to her. I was like, oh, she done drank the Kool-Aid. She done guzzled it down. It's done. She finished yeah. the cup. She's made more. She's made her own batch at this point. And the flags, the, the red flags were there all along. But I mean, <clears throat> that was, that had to be the final, the final straw, probably why he um, lost it like that in the finale. But we'll get to that because that was crazy, that, that fight. <laughs> <laughs> they were like like a doing her like a bag of, <laughs> bag oh, of that was really crazy. Like they was they were really battling it out in the What's in that gas. Your Twitter says she got tossed like a, a empty pack of tasteful nudes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. But you know what? I did I did like that, you know, like usually in films and stuff, they'll be like, Oh, we don't want the man to fight the woman type of thing. And it was like, no, this is a woman who's trained. This is a Marine. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. not like, you know, she's ready saying. to fight him. And so she I like that they. him one good time in the, in the first episode. It's not like, you know, mm-hmm. she is like some lightweight. She can, right. yeah. she got, she has the hands. She has hands. Yeah. So she I like that they, they had that included in there and it wasn't like, oh no, Rick can't fight her. We have to just 
you know, immediately deferred to Michonne being the one that fights her. And I was like, nah. Right. Like, no, Michonne could finish her up. She could finish yeah. her off. <laughs> a little, would it, then Apple, Applebee's two for 20. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, I, th- I thought it was cute. I love teamwork, you know? I love teamwork. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was, that was good teamwork. Yeah. Because, and again, Rick fighting for years and days and for, and, forever it seems like he's always fighting forever and then here comes michonne zoop zoop finish <laughs> literally three moves and it was done for exactly as usual she like, always ah. has to clean up after him okay let's explain how people keep se- i mean of course if you're the star of a tv show yes you're gonna have plot armor but it's right. not as much plot armor as people think it is because right his because- crm military uniform is made for them to not easily bite through Right, yeah. I was just about to say that the um, ridges, all of that is specifically made so that you can't get bit. The neck guards are were, are supposed to like stop your neck from getting bit in the mm-hmm. helmets. I mean, they're mm-hmm. they're literally made to be bite proof. Yeah, I, I had to remind some people. I can't remember if it was in the spaces that we did or something. Right, else, I but I was saying about or in um, episode one when he goes to escape and he's partially down the manhole and. The father walker mm-hmm. tries to bite his arm. Yeah, and he, and he was he getting bite nothing. Through. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they were like, oh, yeah, can't bite through. I'm like, yeah, you can't bite through the uniform. That's Listen, the whole point of it. Elton's cor- corduroy can stop a walker bite. Mm-hmm. Right. The uniform can stop a walker bite. I was about bite. to say, they're not biting with like metal steel teeth. I mean, these right. are decayed walker <laughs> teeth. <but laughs> it's so regular. Decayed walker teeth. hands. Like it's, not, give, like, it's not Wolverine you're going against here. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one that feels like their teeth should have fell out by now and they should just be gumming people at this point? They should. Not right. gnawed on. <laughs> Imagine getting gnawed on by a walker. I would be so annoyed. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, do like, y'all what believe are you doing? this 14 year crap that he's talking about? No, I don't believe it. I only uh-huh. think, only because it's, if it's dead tissue, how is it hosting live viruses? Like, we all know you can get sick from dead bodies, yes, but I mm-hmm. think that's about it. Most viruses, bacteria need, like, a live host. Like, and I understand that walkers, to a degree, are alive because they're walking and moving, but there's no there's no cellular... Oh, I wish I could remember what happened in science class, but there's no, what is it, cellular restoration, whatever it's called. Nothing's happening. There's no, there's no growth. Nothing can yeah. multiply and grow and be fruitful in a walker except for a parasite or oh my gosh no that's that would be actually scary but um except, but even well, though parasite was like, something we, living to eat you know what i'm saying we do see like the walkers becoming habitats for right. like melting into trees yeah. on them and things like so, that there's a possibility with it there but again it's like how why would it you know how how would it spread Mm-hmm. Right, to humans from there, and I mean, they could focus. They could have focused on mitigating that. No, instead of killing again, even more of the of humans, like they're gassing people right and left. Right, they're creating these large. They're, you that could be large of. scale eliminating walkers. <laughs> exactly, you could have said, "Oh, we're going to march we- across the world, and we're going to put all the walkers down, so that they the diseases that they could possibly be carrying don't end up out here." Exactly. Like, nah, let's just kill people and make more walkers so that the little bit of <laughs> right. us, the hundred thousand of us that'll be left, <laughs> will right. have I a guess... whole lot of infectious walkers. Right, because then eventually you're going to run out of people, so therefore you're going to run out of supplies because these a lot of these scavenging supplies are finite. It's not like mm-hmm. you know there's an endless supply, so you're cutting down the numbers that you need in order to repopulate the the United States and the planet. It just, it doesn't make any sense in the long, in the long run, what Beale is even thinking about, which is why Rick was like, yeah, no, you're out. Like, let me go ahead and finish you off because that didn't even make sense. You just made that up. (laughs) Right. I'm like, so what intelligence level are these people at that they heard this plan and was like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Well, that's the thing too, is like, you gotta remember also that some of these people like remember with, um, with Elizabeth Kubrick, the guy, when he was like, yeah, like, this is crazy and stuff. So you're in a place where most of them is like, if I speak out against this, 
then I'm going to end up as a test subject. I'm going to end up as a walker or a delt or whatever they, you know. So okay. Got to play it, ball to literally survive. Yeah. But uh, so that's why I was thinking that, you know, there would have been more of them. Well, obviously not in the red um, strike squad, but like the other CRM officers, that more of them may have been involved in the, the revolution that was, you know, going on. So it, it's possible that that was going on. Again, some people were saying, you know, maybe if we get a, a Tales episode that shows about some CRM officers who were, weren't with it and what they were trying to do. Right, because we got little crumbs so far. We got Al and, um, and her. And okay. Isabel, yeah. Isabel, yes. We got Al and Isabel, which was cute. There was a little something, but it just it's, it was just crumbs, you know? So maybe an in-depth uh, tale story would be would be nice for the those who are absolutely hell bent on getting more information on the CRM. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> where are we? Um, okay, the elevator. Can we talk about the elevator? Oh. The world. Oh, we didn't get to that. <laughs> okay, we can jump to that and then we can come back to the other. Oh my, no, no, no. Let's go back. My fault. My fault. No, I'm I was just gonna say because again, we were talking about when um Michonne gets into oh, um Jason's apartment. Oh my gosh, yes, I did skip that. Girl, Sorry. you lived in the trash dump for a reason. Because <laughs> that what is going on? You what is just happening? got here. Where is your you, room it's been already? Literal days. Where did you get all of this stuff? <laughs> She's got clay. She's got easels. The bed is not made. Like it's just so much going on. It's Out so of much going on. Completely. I was like, but girl, I can't. Make, I, her making herself another cat was so petty. Because, right, right. <laughs> Because she definitely tried to get it back from Rick too. She was like, <laughs> and the cat back. And he was like, no, <laughs> no cat. What cat? He been stepped <laughs> on it and slid it over to him like a, like a drop 20. It's, it's over. <laughs> like, it's absolutely done. Um, and again, but, it shows like her, her, you know, obsession. A, right. The them. That letter was, Continue. Was, was terrible work. Oh, that letter. letter was crazy. Like she was really setting them up to get all the way wiped off the map. Like, mm-hmm. and then then to leave people by name to for them specifically to hunt down. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, she said. Oh no, I'm burning it all down. I'm dead. I, so everyone's gonna like, have to go with me. See y'all in the afterlife. Exactly. So all the people who were saying like Michelle should have given her some compassion and just lied to her and said you know, what she needed to hear so that she can die. No. This woman stole that plans. lady's piece for six years. Absolutely not. Fuck like that, that. But then we saw what she was what she was saying in that letter. She had no compassion for them even in her death. She was just like, no. <laughs> she blamed the whole Okafor's death on Michonne. Like, mm-hmm. she shot him. First, she didn't shoot him. Right. Okay. right. Lied on her at that. Like, yeah. please. It was like you. She. You did that on purpose because you wanted them to go to Alexandria and the other communities with a vengeance. Mm-hmm. You did that on purpose because you wanted them to go there and not ask any questions. You wanted That's them to go immediately months. with bombs and just drop and decimate that community. So no, she doesn't need any compassion. Is in her last moments. Goodbye. Like. Please, and don't let the door hit you on the way out. I know she's looking <laughs> up like, wow. she They really just wiped them all out. Yep. Just like Not looking up again. <laughs> Listen, a lot of people from this show is looking up. <laughs> a lot of them are looking up. <laughs> looking up. Looking down is a, is, a, is a very, very sacred and not and not easily given um, honor, honestly, because the questionable things have happened. So, so sorry, but there's going to be a lot of people looking up from this scene. Wait, did y'all, sure see, the, did y'all see the post on Twitter? It said Jadis's face as she watches General Bill walk into hell. And it was like, <laughs> the guy walked, turned around like, oh, look who I know, imagine, because I know Jadis is sit, probably sitting there and then see General Bill walk in like, oh. They got your ass too. They I knew they were going to get you. <laughs> I, I know Pearl is rolling in. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's over for all of us. They, yeah. they, won. <laughs> they won. First she's sitting there by herself and now it's 500 people there with her. She's like, what the hell? <laughs> exactly. She's like, oh, yeah, I knew. And and again, that's what they should be beating her ass because if she had to just mind her business, mm-hmm. 
this wouldn't happen. Like she really could have minded her business, like, and everything would have been fine. Mm-hmm. If you why were you following them? <laughs> like, why was you so skulking around in the first place? This is exactly why you always end up in something. Because mm-hmm. you're not to mind your business. Because when the helicopter crash happens and they go there and for them, it's case closed. Oh, we, yeah, Rick's dead, Dana's dead, mm-hmm. Holly's dead. That was her opportunity to say to herself, you know what? Even because you, she said she knows Rick and Michonne could do anything and she knows eventually they would come back to the CRM. That was your opportunity to say, you know what, General Bill? Um, I think I, I want to go be an artist. I'm going to go back to... <laughs> I'm going to go back to the CRP and I'm going to just ha- chill there while you guys do your march. I'm going to just slide across <laughs> and you could have went right back to the market, had yourself a booth next to Banjaro and then chilling. And so when and Rick you, and Michelle came... Art, like, what made you want to enlist in the military, girl? Yeah. You could. You absolutely could have done your art mm-hmm. and just and just been calm. You could have just minded your business and when, and when Rick escaped the first time, you could have just walked off whistling and said, well... I did my part, <laughs> saved his life. Hope they're happy. Yep. Exactly. Because like, you would have been right there. So the when they would have blow up something. Yeah. Like, oh, FYI, Michonne's husband's not dead. She doesn't need to grieve him. Like, you know, maybe she can come visit. Like, it's never been, like, she could have, I don't know. I feel like, especially with her rank in the military, she could have saved quite a few people, but she didn't want to. Even though she said she cared about them, she clearly didn't. Like, yeah, they right. told her the children were starving. She was not moved. Mm -hmm. but the way like part of bill's speech when he was trying to like you know really bring rick into the fold he's like you know bring your wife girlfriend kids i don't give a damn he's like you could have left with that bill like you could have opened up with that maybe he'd still have a hand (laughs) right right like did and who else got this offer like is was this only on the table for rick like that's why I was like, I feel like he was just saying that to Rick because he knew he needed a, a bit of convincing to get him in. And what he would have done if Rick had said yes, he would have said, hey, um, send about 50 of them over there. Wipe his community yep. out while we're doing this death march headed from this way. So by the time we get over there, oh, no. Oh, your community is gone. Rick, what are you going to do now? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you might as well just stay with us. Mm-hmm. The setup. That's what I feel like. He was just trying to set his ass up. He was just yeah. telling him anything right then to placate him. Right, because he knows get- where Rick is from is probably no joke. Yeah. And he's, pro- is he, he's probably been protecting that information with his life. Hasn't told anybody anything. So I think Bill was, was definitely trying to see if he was loose enough to tell him where to, to give him some information. And, and Rick, he was on his. He was on his. He, yeah. he One thing about him is he don't fall for the mind games. <laughs> He was like, "Oh, you think you're slick?" He turned on de- he turned on his detective um detective Grimes mode in that he was not playing. He was in the hot he was in the hot seat too. He was staying calm and cool, quite mm-hmm. literally having flashbacks. Or I don't know, maybe those were for us. But he was just sitting there calm, just mm-hmm. getting, not even sweating. And he's usually sweating. <laughs> All right, you're not gonna do too much with my man, okay? <laughs> Listen, he was in there sweating bullets, and as he should have, he had he had a lot riding on him in that moment. He was doing a lot, so I'm not gonna ask for it. But he was absolutely drenched by the time he was <laughs> that old man. slid across that table, and suddenly he was soaking. I was like, "Was it flash dance? What happened?" When you got I was just table? about to say, "Let's talk about the death slide because because." Bill held his own. Let me not do too much because Bill held his own. He, you know, he he didn't go down too quick. He really he ate that knife throw because that would have been it. Yeah, for me. he did. He did. You just throw a knife at me. Not that would have been it for you. It would have been. I'm like, I'll finish you up quickly, please, please. Because no, imagine you stabbed like absolutely. Not. I can't take. I can't take. This. And he it definitely caught him. Like that would have been it for me. I would have played dead, honestly. <laughs> I'm not. I was not cut out for that world. I, I'm playing dead. But if someone slid across the desk on me, you, all right, y'all, ask, y'all, y'all are big and bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my, my god. god! I keep wondering who the hell they got to stand in for Terry Oakley because I know he can slide there, across that desk and land on him. First. <laughs> knowing he don't listen, knowing he be hitting people by accident. Thank I you. So scared. 
Exactly. That's why I'm nervous. At. Especially because he stand, don't the, the stunt the, double. The, 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 like, don't he's go going to punch me in the face somehow. Somehow like, I'm going to end up punched in the face. If but, I was Kerry oh, O'Quinn, I would have been like, man, did he drop deny? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get can we get something in writing, please? That he's gonna follow directions, even though Denise said he did not. <laughs> did not. So you thank God right. he was carried there. Hopefully, he definitely wasn't supposed to slide across the desk. Like, why did he? <laughs> was that double was supposed to slide across the he's, damn he's desk? He's gonna show you. He still got. He still got. Um, he, still got <laughs> he is not about to sit and let a stunt double do everything for him. He, mm-hmm. he said, you're gonna see my face too. Actually, yeah. yeah. Like you're gonna. And you're I'm gonna imagining know. had a stunt double did that, it would have been like, oh, okay, he split across, but not as impactful as us looking at his face as he's right the whole time. That is just yeah. crazy. That's all we talked about for a good little minute. Yeah. Once we like, once we awoken from from that sex scene. We went right <laughs> onto the desk slide. We were dead. <laughs> we said, "Oh, and he's giving desk slides." This is exactly <laughs> when he threw that much. knife, like the, the 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 knife throw, and then the slide across the table. I right, because like, imagine you've just plucked a knife from your chest. You're checking to see if you're bleeding out, and you look down, <laughs> and this man is coming at you, thirty miles an hour. <laughs> Off a knee slide. Coming off at you knee. off a knee slide. And you sitting there, you seven days, you have not fought in God knows how long. You didn't even do your six years of co-signment. You was just pouring tea. He was just breathing hard at the fence. <laughs> like he's like, you didn't sorry, you didn't have to I would have been with the night. Like you didn't have to slide across the table. You saw like, you, you had time to hard and walk at around. The fence. That was that was excessive, actually. Like you had time to get up and walk around. You're doing me horrible right now. This is this this is a lot. Then he goes and turns it into a true crime show for about six minutes. <laughs> It's the look out to the side too. They saw they showed him pondering because he had no plan with that. As usual, Rick's plan is is always missing pieces. Kill Bill, but now what? Exactly. And then he sat there like, oh, wait a minute. Let me get around. this radio. What am I going to do? Because he knows absolutely in that moment that Pearl is going to want to talk to him about the briefing. The briefing. And like, and he's like, nah, um, Bill, Bill sent me to do something real quick. What? <laughs> he, he went into the woods to uh to uh, be alone. You don't think she's going to check? <laughs> you know she knows. She knows she's going to go check. Like, please, like, he might have a ritual that he does after he gives the briefing or something. And she probably like, why the fuck would he go out and said, that's not what he does after he gives the You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. He's like, that's not, y'all was supposed to have tea. <laughs> and then go. I know she's looking. She, she's sitting there wondering, like, hmm. They definitely was. I was like, that was another thing in that scene. I was like, sir, he ain't give you the uniform or nothing. You no. are drinking. You making tea. You glancing out the window. Like, do you not see this man give you the murder glare across the table? Right. You walking around telling your story. <laughs> <laughs> how you sacrificed Pittsburgh for Philly and you don't even notice that you about to get sacrificed. Like, yes. That was the thing that drove me crazy in that part because Rick is telling him about how he had to sac- he, how he had to bite a man's throat out to save his son. Mm-hmm. And your response is well I let my whole community get destroyed. Like I set them <laughs> up for the kill. <laughs> you thought that like, was going to impress Rick? Like he was going to say, "Oh yeah, you're a leader that I should follow." Like he's like, "What?" He was a oh, false yeah, equivalency. Like, he was about to be horrified as he should be because yeah. why would you do that? I was like, "Sir, that's not impressing this court. man." Again, we're like, "Okay, we've known Rick for seasons, so we know like how he's going to respond to certain things." But again, Bill, like you sat on the the bench with this man, you sat. You're sitting across this table with this man. You, you've had other conversations with him. Like, you can't tell that he's not with the shit. Right. Like, you don't... What, what was the uh, theme? Not leaving people behind and you sitting here telling him that you left mm-hmm. a whole city behind to die? Mm-hmm. Like, that's absolutely not what Rick is going to go for. Even, even if he never reunited with Michonne and he made it to that briefing. That probably would have made him snap just the mm-hmm. same way, and he mm-hmm. still would have ended up getting wheeled in a box somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> because what do you mean you let your whole city die? That's crazy. Mm-hmm. How'd you get this job? Yeah, absolutely. That's, but he know also because that's the reason that he did not promote Rick. Mm-hmm. That position that he gave it to Pearl because he knew 
Rick was not going to go along with this, mm -hmm. but exactly. he was just still hoping that he could convince Rick for some reason. That was the right. thing that was like, why are you still trying to convince Rick? But I, I think, you know, obviously Rick returning maybe is what made big, him yeah. think, oh, here's, oh, maybe he is willing to do these things because he came back here when he could have gone home. So right. let me just offer up. Like, that, you was know, big, bring... like, that was probably a big trust earner in Beale's eyes, mm -hmm. which... <laughs> You know, I'm not going to lie. That probably would have got me too. Cause you, he could have gone anywhere, but you know, um, and his, no, probably, that, his that would have been immediate like sus. You know? He <laughs> really needs a successor and maybe something, maybe there's a scene. I'm, I don't know. I don't know, but maybe something when he gave Pearl that briefing made him realize, okay, she'll be a good to carry out this mission, but she can't take my place. Mm -hmm. And he's still searching for that person to take his place one day because he, I mean, he, I, he obviously knows his time. We've been, only got 14 years and he doesn't know how many years he has. He's got a, he has no one in place with Okafor mm -hmm. gone to take his place. And maybe Jadis wasn't, next in line either to him he he sees those flaws in every in every other option he had which made him um maybe a little bit oblivious to rick because he really wanted it to work uh to his fault because yep. that didn't work out well for him at all not at all slid right across the table <laughs> right up, literally literally caught him slipping Mm -hmm. In the worst, in the worst way, and to it, it's so. Of course, it would be a sword that he has to swear on. Like that was his. Once he saw, like that's that's his wife's secret source of power. Like, yeah, you, you just charged him up, actually. Mm -hmm. And the, he gave the to give a monologue while you have a sword through someone's hand and just moving it, and like, and he's <laughs> suffering. Like that was not by accident. <laughs> Because he was really making him suffer. He was like, no, you've done some atrocities. You gassed, you had my wife gassed and took a year from her because I'm all of that. And then all the time he lost, because remember he said, you know, the time he lost. So he mm -hmm. was angry mm -hmm. and he wanted to get his lick back. At, like the only, yeah. And he, I feel like and, he and did it like in the most humane both. way he could. <laughs> like, yeah. There's so long you can torture someone before it starts to get weird. <laughs> now, like Oh no, I can't hear you. Sorry. I can't hear you now. Okay, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I like that he said about that, you know, he didn't lose his son. Because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously when he tells, you know, Neil about the, the part earlier, and then he's like, oh, you know, you, you lost him and stuff. And then I like that he was back to, like, that, you know, Michonne coming back, the phone, the conversations that all reaffirmed is like, I didn't lose my son. Like, he's still here with me. Matter of fact, I got another one. <laughs> like, why my wife came for like, me like you know like I those days when Michonne really put his head right because he came mm -hmm. back on a whole because I was nervous I was like oh my god like I, is this briefing gonna like draw him back in he's like oh no I absolutely he's like I can't believe I, I was I'm all in for this this is terrible yeah. I was wilding <laughs> like, he came <laughs> so quick yeah so I just loved it. It was because, you know, they usually like to give Rick, you know, some nice meaty monologues and stuff. So I liked it. It was it was short. It was sweet. And it was perfect. Call back to um, episode four and five. Him coming back. Right. Because he had to, he keeps going through these things that really break him down mentally and astonishingly so with the help of his family and you know the people around him he really manages to come out of it better mm -hmm. almost every time almost every time he he always learns something from it and he always thankfully does it at the right moment <laughs> because had he just hesitated just a little bit longer maybe maybe Bill would have caught him with that gun so thank goodness yeah he was where he was he was on point when he needed to be because again that slide was chef's kiss <laughs> yeah I think he's always theatrical with his fights. Those of us that know Mr. Grimes very well, we knew, okay, so he's not getting through this echelon briefing. He's about to give himself away any second now, right? <laughs> right. Because this isn't going to, he is a horrible doubt. Like, he's eventually going to give himself away. Hopefully, Beal don't notice. But, like, and I wasn't so worried about him because he was only in the room with Beal, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Michonne, on the other hand, is <laughs> like steam is coming out of her ears sitting there Literally. watching these people. She's freaking Behind horrified. Them. And I'm like, oh my God, please don't give yourself away in a room like, full of assholes right now. Please be calm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Even when she like got up and stormed out, I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna oh my god. after her. Someone gonna ask her a question. Mm-hmm. I was so scared yes. for her. I was like, please get out of this in one piece. Please, 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 be calm, <laughs> be calm. We're, you're gonna blow them all up. I promise you. <laughs> Just get like the plan. Yeah, that was that part had me stressed out too. Again, yeah. when she goes into the lobby and she picks up the bunny off the floor, another little call back to yes. season one with mm. um. The little girl with the, with the, with the little girl walker, yeah, yeah. Okay, girl. So that was a little callback to that, and you know her just seeing that, and that was her saying, "Why are you collecting these things? Like, oh, I need to go into this auditorium, right? Like, oh, I have to go into this auditorium and find out what the hell you guys are up to because why are you guys collecting kids children's toys? toys and little? And those just for little kids, like stuffed animals is for the babies, you know." Mm-hmm. And you're not giving no 12, 13 year old no a stuffed animal. So yeah. what are y'all up to? This is questionable. You know, yeah. Yeah, this is not okay. Cause she's like, oh, Rick, like she, in her head, she knows Rick is getting the briefing, but she's like, oh, I still need to see <laughs> something mm-hmm. else. <laughs> like, I'm gonna go check this out also because. Yeah. Like, let me go scoop up some intel. Mm-hmm. Cause she but could easily the- like left out and went back again and she was on her way she was like oh, yeah man gotta do it like yeah because she was out the door but she had to turn around and go back because that's who she is that's who they both are yeah they wouldn't have been able to live with themselves and they would have been looking over their shoulders for the rest of their lives mm-hmm. had they just left anyway they had to do that that's why there was like that immediate flash to um michonne's last episode on the main show well no it was the flash to um to scars yeah the flash mm-hmm. to scars because it shows like her remembering like people taking children. Right. So she's just like, oh no, like, no, this is not something that I'm going to abide by. And we're not, yeah. So let me go figure out what exactly the plan, their plan is. And once she saw that plan again, when she got up on that auditorium, I was like, girl, you, are you just going to stand up in the middle of the meet and just leave? <laughs> Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, please, like, if you don't slide out calmly, like, you <laughs> She open didn't even do, like, you doors. know, you leave a movie theater because you got to pee said- real quick. <laughs> you like, let me do a little hunch. She was like, I'm standing straight up. No, you- She's and- throwing both of those doors open, let every little bit of light spill into that room behind her. She <laughs> said, oh, no. Y'all are going to know my my di- my dis- my dissatisfaction with y'all because mm-hmm. what is this? After yeah. Like, what are these and it was giving it was crazy because when they were showing the pictures of the kids then i said she picked that last one which oh, it looked yeah. just like it could have been one of her babies and i was yeah. like i know that's tearing her up because and it's like almost like they were trying to desensitize the sho- the soldiers the show wow soldiers to it mm-hmm. and um by showing them these images of the kids, almost trying to like prepare them for the t- the faces they're gonna see in real life, and to so I'm like, okay, this is like I'm I'm sure these faces are cute, but you guys got to do what you got to do, and they were just kind of all just sitting there like statues. Looked very, it was very unsettling the way they were just sitting there, calm, expressionless. Michonne is the only one sitting there, visibly horrified mm-hmm. by what's going on in front of her. Yeah, and that, even that was scary, and I I'm sure Michonne noticed that too. Like she's the only one out of everyone here that has a problem with this. Mm-hmm. They all gotta go. Yeah. You know, it makes me think about when you watch movies and there's always, you know, the the main bad guy and then he has, like, his main, you know, villain, that's, you know, guy that's under him that does, like, the dirty work and stuff. And then there's always a thousand henchmen. And you're like, why are you so... Why are you willing to go along with these things? Like, John Wick is coming in here and he's killing everybody and you're still jumping in his direct... Like, why are you doing this? Right. Like, I, but again, it shows, like, henchmen, like, the mentality, like, of getting them and getting them into, like, doing whatever right. dastardly deed you're up to. And they're willing to die for this and they just go along with it. And we kind of, like think of ourselves and we think of other people as like, no, that most people would step up and do the right thing, but... Right, or at least see the weirdness and cut out. Like, But we know historically, that's not normally what happens. Hard mentality or or whatever that is called, like, it kicks in. You don't want to be the oddball out Uh to to, to go against, especially when you see what's happening. I think that's that's how Negan got into power because, you know, you see someone getting their face burnt off, you're like, "Mm, I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet. Yeah, I'm gonna just do it. Let me, let me blend I it. To, I'm just, to make it I don't want to make it. 
So it, that that type of intimidation and that type of um that type of brainwashing it, it works. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you see people getting half anybody who doesn't fit the criteria, if you speak too much or you're you just get disappeared one day because you had too many opinions, you're gonna stop having opinions. Yeah. So, you know, that's what's that's what happened to them. And when you get to that point where you you're gonna you're willing to sit by and let horrific things happen in the name of protecting yourself, I mean you get what you get. Yeah. Oh you yeah. Know? Let me let me make sure I slide this in here too, because you can't convince me now that they were not trying to take my girl Connie to some CRM facility to be used as a test subject. Y'all remember that that moment? Wait, remember, th- so they sent most of our group in um, 11C of The Walking Dead, they sent them basically to Alexandria, um, Outpost 22, right? Oh, yeah, but they turned it into a jail. Right, right, right. But remember, Connie got put on a train, and yeah. they said that all they know is they go far away and they never see him again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm horrified. Because again, that goes into we you guys dairy about um Lance being one of possibly being one of the embeds. And she was a journalist before exposing people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad things were probably gonna happen to Connie. Thank yeah. God. Be- and then Thank and also God, she was not on that track. For real, yeah, they really saved her from a horrific end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that it also makes me think of Padre and them collecting kids. And yeah. it's like... Very weird. Brainwashing them, changing their name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very similar. It's good. It's giving... Because you can't name... It's like it's like a brand where it they all have a bunch of different um, subsets. So if you get mad at one, you don't even know that they're connected to the other. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like it's all branches of the same tree. And that tree was I was Beale in the CRM, and we finally saw that part. But I think all of that is connected. You're a hundred, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that just that just clicked for me. Padre definitely would be. I think is I, I, because they were talking about kids, right? That could have been one of their places where they were collecting kids to see mm-hmm. who's an A, who's a B, and they were plucking the kids from there. Mm-hmm. Wow, they could be getting their operatives like once. Padre raises them and trains them to whatever they want, then they could be going there to take the older ones as operatives to plant them in other communities. There's a lot of different directions that I think the CRM storyline could go in. People are freaking out, like, why would they end the storyline? It is not anywhere near over. Right. It's not even close to being over. Like right, like you said, it was, it's probably a factor in France. Yeah. Uh, it was I, I mean, fear is over, so we're probably we're not going to obviously get anything else there. But there's still t- there's still so many places, and then Dead City's in the future, so yeah, they have an opportunity with that to show us a world without the the, the CRM, or if it you know materialized and came back somehow and was actually still working behind the scenes, or you know what have you. Because I mean, there's no way that they're either a factor or they're not, but in dead city, you know what I'm saying? They either are, they're either not going to get addressed or it is, but I'm, I'm definitely interested to see since it is set in the future. I'm almost certain, right. That it's like, it's, so, um, it's, it's, it's after Daryl Dixon. It's after the ones who live. It's the furthest yeah. uh, spin off in the future. It's even after that episode of tales that's supposed to be set way into the future. It's after that too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah. So then, that 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 w- I definitely would love to see uh, a CRM mention in that just to just because of the time frame alone, mm-hmm. just to give you a clue of what's happened since then. Because obviously, things at the end of the ones who live, things have changed. Yeah. You know? So, but you know, mm-hmm. yeah, we could do that on the other shows. Because oh yeah, no, <laughs> that's not I what this show that about. From those shows. <laughs> So all the people Let me who be clear. in, so they know that that's clear. what this was going to be about. Like, surprise. They've been saying epic love stories since, Although you know, that's probably, that's got to be the direction it's going to go in. Because you see the, the the response to the ones who live. We need the we need more. Mm-hmm. More is needed if they're going to listen to the the majority of, I mean, I mean, ooh, excuse my language. Numbers don't lie. So you mm-hmm. got to show the people what they want to see. Yeah. Or not. But 
Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll what see. Happens. Like, but there's potential there. There's potential. Uh, there's a lot of potential there, and there's <laughs> there's so many ways that could go. I'm really interested to see that. Definitely, because that would be that would be some that would be a really good tie-in, and to you know, and if, if there's some grand reunion with everyone. I mean, there's no way you can't address it. There's no way you can't. Excuse me. There's no way you can't address it if there is some uh, big big reunion coming later. How would you? you know, tie that in. Everyone's got to get caught up. Mm-hmm. One thing that I do love about all the Walking Dead shows seemingly, um, there's never like love loss. Like if they need somebody to come back, they had Morgan's wife and son come reprise <laughs> their role. Yeah. They, do their, they do right by their people because yes. they, nobody's ever upset with them and good as they should not be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just goes to show what a good work environment it, it is and how good the people are because, you know, to be able to call on people from 14 years ago, or excuse me, so from 10, 11 years ago to come back and reply, prize a role is, whoo. And yeah. then they're more than happy to do it too. More than happy to. Yeah. yeah. And they and didn't they eat looking exactly the same? I yeah. Don't know. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I said, come on, Jenny and Dwayne serving. And they also <laughs> like to uplift, um, you know, their actors and stuff because they bring them back as producers, as writers, as directors. So it's it's truly a family. And I think that's why it's so easy for the fans to become these different groups of different types of families within the fan base as well. Um. Look, we done went all around in circles. Let's rewind it a little bit and bring it back to this 45-minute elevator ride that we had to take. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. Okay, I was wondering when, we, when it was safe to mention the elevator ride. Man. <laughs> that was the most stressful moment in the whole episode for me. When he gets on and presses six, and then it finally... Got to the ding for this two. I said we just get the two. <laughs> what is who is someone pulling this elevator by hand? <laughs> like, what is happening here? This is. It was so. I, I was sweating too. I was like, oh my gosh, please. And then I'm looking through the mask. I'm looking at Ricky. Looking at me at this point. I'm like, I can't help you. you just, <laughs> like, you better hope that. And then he, this guy, looks over, looks down. He doesn't even give him a chance to ask what it is. It, is it ketchup? Right. Is it a coin? <laughs> Nothing. We're instantly we're instantly tussling in this elevator, which is crazy. Yeah, because Rick just Rick jumped him first. Yeah, he, he said, slammed him he said, to the wall. I can't even risk it. <laughs> can't even I risk can't it. even. But I was like, that was the slowest elevator ride. It was stressing me out. I was like, <laughs> freight elevators aren't even this slow in real life. Like I was just about to say, there's barely anything on here. This is like, shit. Why are we going to the sixth floor? I'm like, like Rick, stop looking at the floor, man. You look <laughs> nervous. You look guilty. Floor. Your cop plate cool. Jesus. Oh my God. And again, we th- I thought I was like, oh. He no, was instantly Rick. under the bed again, like 411. <laughs> 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 that's that's the vibe it gave me though that that Mm -hmm. oh my god like who's gonna like am i gonna Mm -hmm. get found out like remember when he went to like when he had to like hold his watch to stop him from ticking ticking. i was like oh man this is this is intense Mm -hmm. and then they started just just like fighting and then joy you put the best gift up he started pummeling this man i've never seen rick get this many punches in back to back he Never. They they corrected some wrongs with that because this poor man. <laughs> they was hurt. They was looking all that trash. Like, was they'll like, give you a good kick. It was one thing we're gonna kick. do is get his ass beat. So. <laughs> exactly. They'll give you a kick, but nine times out of ten, the hands are the hands are iffy with him. So they said, no, nope, nope, nope. The combat is up. The combat is up. The combat is up. And I was right there for it. But I was like, I always say when people, you know, even when we crack jokes and with other people where we crack jokes about Rick, you know, getting beat up and stuff all the time. I'm like. You know what? That's the the test of like a true fighter is whether mm-hmm. you can take the hits, right? Because throwing he, punch he, is fine, he but if you can't take getting hit, you're done. Then the fight is over. Out. You knocked out. You sleep. 
And yeah. one thing about him is he doesn't get put to sleep. He yeah. he'll he'll eat those punches. He'll take mm -hmm. he'll get hit yeah. back. He'll eat them every time. Mm -hmm. Cause so when I remember like, the okay. governor was punching him. I'm like, stop turning your head back. <laughs> like he's like, I'm like please. Oh like, no, he learned it like this one. Because remember when the guy went to punch him and he shifted his head to the side so the guy he punched said, him. I said, look at you, like learn something. <laughs> you done learned how to dodge. Finally, yes. Oh my god, but that one hit when the dude hit him and he went and blood flew onto the wall. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> That's another concussion. There's got to be a limit at this point. Like the concussion count between Rick and Michonne together, poor things. Like I'm surprised that they're real. They're, they don't hallucinate more. <laughs> Someone's always knocking them out, drugging them. Who knows? They've been through so much. And then, and even Michonne knew because when the elevator finally, finally gets to where it's supposed to be, and it opens up, and this man is on the floor, she's like, Rick. <laughs> yeah. yeah so she had to bring him back because she was about to get tackled for he real did, yeah yeah definitely about to he was not going to give it oh. a second so he she had to make sure he heard her voice before he got to before he got to work on her next because again oh that that feral look that rick was giving right there as the mm -hmm. elevator was coming back and he was looking like whoever's on this like i'm about to kill that like that feral look look is that's that red machete that's murder code it was all right there in the eyes i was like uh mm -hmm. and, and again i just love too that michonne is just not phased by that all she's like rick what are you doing you up here killing people he's like what rick, is it rick what, what's, what's this in dripping, the box man this is dripping, dripping um box that you done brought what, up here what's in the what box is, man what's in the box what are we gonna do with this and he's like mm, so babe <laughs> if i was supposed to get the briefing and then we were gonna dip like, you know, I might have killed someone. <laughs> the look on his face when she's like, what's that? Right. They're so unintentionally funny with those scenes. <laughs> the rapport is just delicious because so much was said with that look. He was like, hmm. What <laughs> that happened was. <laughs> well, walk with me here. I technically did a good thing. The timing questionable, but <laughs> but and we rise. <laughs> yeah. What does she do? She puts an additional body in the box. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, let's take the other one too. Like, let's. I I got something for this. And again, I love like that. Um, you know, that he just lets Michonne lead him. Mm -hmm. Very much so, because when he was um, when they get to the other office and they're getting the grenades and Rick says, you know, we could just go. Like, we can just go mm -hmm. home. That broke me because I was like, damn, y'all could just go home. Bill is dead. Like, all mm -hmm. y'all gotta do is get rid of Pearl and y'all are good. Like, y'all might be, you know, there's no dossier. They're not gonna find you for the most part. But mm -hmm. Michonne has to bring them back and say, hey, you know, this is what we do. Like, we yeah. can't, like, we're never gonna sleep comfortable again knowing that yeah. this is still here yeah and poor man he just wants to go home and meet, he just wants to go back home to his babies like he is so tired at this point because she's really <laughs> broken broken through through to him now at this point he wants to go home almost not more than her but he really wants to go like mm -hmm. he doesn't even want to even risk mm -hmm. not being able to come home to them and that was like that let me know that episode four really it really got through to him. I was afraid that the programming was a little bit too deep and there was something still there, but no, he was so out of it that he was ready to be out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because again, it goes to the little flash of them, you know, in bed preparing for the, the plan. And when she says about, you know, if he can, you know, get back to her. Mm -hmm. So that's when he's just like, do I even want to risk that like we're, we're we're back together again i got the echelon briefing we killed bill like do we even need to do the rest of this because i don't want to risk again us going into another circumstance where i could lose you exactly and she's just like nah babe you ain't see them to the children like we can't we can't let this happen like we gotta do this like this is, right. not, this is what we do like we, we're a little crazy <laughs> We're a little crazy. We've always been a little crazy. I also it's like that perfect like, combination of like when you meet somebody that you're like, oh, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little, there's a little something, something right with me a little bit. And then you meet somebody else and it's like, 
oh, something a little not right with you. It matches perfectly with mine. Like, oh my God, you're my lobster. Um, okay, so elevator, put the body, put, okay, yeah. So I love oh. how- For all being damn nosy. Mind oh, your business, God. lady. Even mind her damn business. I love how Nat has been a constant presence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The whole thing. Teaching her the things. I knew there was a reason to the scene in episode two of having her like working on stuff with him. Like mm-hmm. doing the little the little tinkering and the, yeah. the teetering with the things. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to come back to that. And let, look at her setting up those grenades, getting everything together. And Rick's like, how do you learn how to do this? Like, <laughs> like Nat. He just sitting there like, babe, like, babe, you know how to do stuff. Like, look at my baby guys. He's always so impressed with her new skills because he watches her so closely. Oh, golden retriever husband. Exactly. And of course they find time to make out like that. <laughs> one thing about one thing about Michonne, like she gonna bring him back with a kiss. She's like, come on, come on, stay with me. Let's let's, mm-hmm. let's get it together. And they Remember, he was rubbing on that back and that little flash. And we're like, sir, she is tired. She is tired. She is sore. <laughs> like, please, she's not even dehydrated. She looks at you. We have to go off the war it. now. Right. She's She's got to walk. She's got to, she needs to do some of her legs. Like, please, please give her a minute. Please. Please give her a minute, sir. Get she your thumb all the way off my back. On her stomach, like, please. <laughs> she's not even talk. She's not even turning around to look at you because she knows what type of time you want. <laughs> <laughs> but oh yeah, can we talk about for a second since we're back to that scene? The lighting. This oh, whole yeah. this whole season. Adrian, oh, please give him the things. He oh, yes. work. Beautiful. He did, Rick, he did Rick good too. Like it's not easy to find that balance, especially yeah. with the two of them together. Mm-hmm. And for him to make them both look so good. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard. Yeah. But he only lit it... about 800 candles. <laughs> <laughs> Had all of Bed Bath and Body Works in there. And you know, as <laughs> as he should have, because that was so romantic. Mm-hmm. So beautiful, like, and they was on, they was on a pallet, like they was really getting it together. No bed, no nothing. Like mm-hmm. they said, now nah, they said, now nah, that twin bed situation, we need space. <laughs> to roll. But yeah, just the the lighting and just like just the way Rick gazes at her, the way she's yeah. gazing back at him. It's, it's just so again, cute. it's like a moment of intimacy that you're like, oh, I shouldn't even be looking at this, or like. Ooh, this is a level of love that's like this is an intimate moment. Like he really <laughs> captured real intimacy on the camera, just them looking at each other, almost breathing in unison, like mm-hmm. beautiful, beautiful stuff. Stuff that you cannot script, stuff that you can't even practice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's something very natural that you that comes with years and years of working with each other and yeah. completely trusting each other um on set because it's also like a really awkward position to be in for an actor like you, you're like pressed up against somebody barely clothed so to be able to convey that closeness without like without it coming off as awkward or weird mm-hmm. and it's just you're not even focusing on them being like half dressed or what they were in the middle of doing you're focusing on their conversation and how they're yeah. looking at each other and how the seriousness of what they're about to do mm-hmm. again it's like it goes back to what Scotty G saw on when Denai showed up on set the first days and he was just like oh i'm gonna secretly rewrite this whole show they don't even know because (laughs) what these two people are doing right here like no we need to capitalize on this like this this is fostered like this needs to be at the forefront and i'm just gonna start my sneaky moves right here and start implanting things it was like yeah love it It it's like again thank you scotty g Mm, mm, mm." because a lot of People in the industry would have said, you know what, this might be too controversial. This might be something I should, we shouldn't do because it could cause some conflict or, you know, whatever. And he was like, I don't care about none of that. I'm setting this thing up. And even if I have to do it in a slow burn method, like, it's like, I'm doing this. Exactly. I'm going to make sure that 
everybody sees it. And I feel like he he had a plan. Like he got because he got us on board real easy. Like he said, yeah, the people who are supposed to see it are gonna see it, and they're mm-hmm. gonna they're gonna do the work for me. And we did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we we definitely we we caught we caught every little crumb. We were like, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We see this too. Yeah, we see we peep. This is absolutely it. Even like when did what was it? Oh, it was clear. Sorry, I could not. I was having a brain fart. Clear, like that episode, like blew it out. They have been giving each other looks and this, that, and the third, the whole, you know, since they had met each other. But episode three twelve, like she already saving his life. Absolutely, mm-hmm. like already. That's I was like, yeah, for me, it was like because she definitely people... could let him be finished, and she would have had no problems. But no, yeah, she, she did the right thing. As I said, from the fence, I saw it, and I was like, hmm. This but was, I didn't think that the show was going to be brave enough to do it. I was just and, about to say, like, I was like, oh no, like they're gonna maybe they'll play with it a little, maybe they'll, yeah, um, they'll they'll tease us, but we we're like we're never gonna get anything like that. Yeah. So. And the, but okay. then when Michonne takes Rick and Daryl and um and Oscar to go get Glenn and Maggie back, mm. and when he tells them when they encounter the walkers on the road, and he tells them to like get into formation. And yeah, like she had that little impressly like, oh, he said, oh, that's a little bit of work. Okay, okay. And then when it was returned, when they got in the cabin, and she killed the the guy in the cabin, and Rick looked like, oh, I was like, oh, oh, they're doing, we're doing something here. Like this right. is going to be a thing. Right. I, I was like, oh, there. this is giving absolute chemistry. And the way he always found a, he was always talking like, oh yeah, you're out of here, you're gone. You know, we're she's not coming back with us, but then just magically, <laughs> just magically she was always just sliding right through there, always. Like, mm-hmm. oh, she's sleep? Okay, maybe another day. <laughs> like, but th- he never had that type of he everyone, he was almost what willing to Axel and Oscar go until until stuff got crazy. He stuck to his guns until mm-hmm. something happened. Same thing with Sasha and Tyrese, ready to send them packing. He mm-hmm. always managed to pull himself together to keep Michonne around. Mm-hmm. He don't let them hallucinations fool him with that. I was just about to say the only time a, salu- a, a hallucination came out for Michonne was to tell him like, "What are you doing with that rope? <laughs> you are fucking put it down." <laughs> Lori had to come out and say, ah, "Put it down. You're doing too much." That's the only mm-hmm. time a hallucination came out for for her. And you know what? Yeah, as it should have because. Be, again, that's Rick's, Rick's self, self subconscious knowing what he needs before you exactly. Are we at the Are we at the the Pearl versus Rashawn fight yet? Well, we're okay. So we're at the them setting up the bomb, right? And Rick, um, oh, again, and the looking at her like, yay! Like, look at that baby! Like, she got a plan! Like, she's and again, okay. So then, for the people who were like, they have the gas just sitting there. If you watch World Beyond, they had the gas just sitting there in World Beyond also. I was so just it's not to like the CRM is coming up with the craftiest ideas here. They're like, dude, the let's leave the there full of gas. Like they constantly do that. But that's 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 bad guys, and that's what they do. The same way they yeah. always for some reason reveal their plan to to the protagonist for some reason. It's just it's just how bad guys are. Like yeah, let's, let's be for real here. That's that's how it works. And at first, they had it in the 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 cold storage. Yeah, and then when that was compromised, they took it out and put it in the shipping containers that were sitting out. And so Hux was like, "Oh, that's the gas right over there, y'all. I'm gonna blow that up." Right. She was like, so, "Oh, yeah. that's that's what like you said. That's what bad guys do. They're like, we're just sitting here because again, who would think who's running up on them at the summit?" Exactly. Who would be who would be crazy enough to try to attack all of them? Yeah. All of the red Nobody's coming at 200, 2,500 um soldiers sitting here at this meeting. They'd like, oh, okay. Boy, do I have news for y'all. <laughs> like nobody's gonna run up on us here. Like, okay. But yeah. Definitely. And then Rick gave Michonne a gift. He's like, I got a gift for you, baby. He always had something for her. He's oh, like, baby. I got a gift for you, babe. <laughs> but, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so cute. He was like, look, I got you a sword, babe. For she's now. like, oh. And the, the way he, like, we we didn't even see him snatch it. Like, he always <laughs> went just to pull it out at the perfect moment. Like, so nobody noticed this the whole time. He just he just had a sword tucked for her just, just to pull out at the last minute. He always makes it a surprise. Mm-hmm. He's so romantic. 
And she absolutely ate with it. She let's get into Michonne Michonne. Michonne being able to use any type of sword she's presented, mm-hmm. any mm-hmm. type of stick, any type of object. She is so flexible. She is so versatile. Yeah. And the way she can wield literally any weapon. Again, I'm like, shout out to Denai because <laughs> I would be so out of breath. She the thing points. she be doing with her body, I'm just like, girl, like, let me sit down. Oh, like, 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 let me sit I down because I need rest. <laughs> because um And just... she does it in a mask when she rehearsed. I said, Oh man, like Yes. I would have passed clean out. <laughs> Pass out. Like, what is She's happening here? Over. Okay. And then she comes up. Yeah. Okay. But again, Michonne's ingenuity, where she was just like, babe, I'm going to slash this open. The water's going to pour out. You grab the flag. We duck under that. It's a good thing she's such a quick thinker. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, survival. That's what it literally, in my head, I'm like, you know, she's like survival at all costs. And her brain mm-hmm. is now trained after all this time to spot yeah. every little thing around her that can be used for her advantage and for someone mm-hmm. else's disadvantage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's really yeah. observant. What was Rick's plan? What was Rick's you know plan she did all that. Of that was her plan. You already know. This was all her plan. It was like, what was Rick's plan? She, she was had no plan. Like, you like, done slid across the table. You done killed Bill. You didn't tell Pearl <laughs> a, a good enough lie to keep her off. Watch her. What was your plan in all of this, sir? You got blood I know that in the elevator. I want to be a fly on the wall when Rick tells Michonne his plan when he cut his hand off. I need, <laughs> I need to hear her him tell her that story because she's gonna go. How far? Did you have a backpack? Did you did you maybe have some water? <laughs> a ban- a band aid? Nothing from nothing. the pump that you just created. Not <laughs> no no not a, not one piece of gauze. Nothing. You just just raw stump out. Just running away. <laughs> I know again. That, it's I not like you hadn't chopped off someone's appendage before, right, sir? So you knew what things needed like, to you be know done. So like you saw what happened to Herschel. Please be for real. And the number one thing that always happens is the person passes out. Thank like, you. That's the first thing they do is pass out from shock. So mighty bold of you to think you were going to cut your own hand off and just run off and run off after in the dark. It's, you can't see. It's walkers out here. You walkers. now have one hand and one X, and then you have to also apply pressure to like how he, he just, he just did. He wanted to go home. Mm-hmm. He wanted to go home. Exactly. That's what, when everybody says that to me and they're like, what, what was wrong with your man? Why would he do that? I'm like, he loves his woman. You never <laughs> loved anybody home. like this before. Okay? You need to step your love language up. Your love level up. Like, what you okay? mean? You wouldn't cut your hand off to get back to you're not your willing to life. cut your hand off, we're not going to work. Like, <laughs> you don't love me. <laughs> you don't love me. You don't really love me. I'm just saying. No, you you spilled. It's like that just shows like his the level of his desperation in that moment and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's just like Yeah. So Rick is a terrible liar. He apparently <laughs> <laughs> had zero plan. He said he had a plan. He clearly had zero plan. None. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know how to pivot off a change in a plan that he created by murdering Bill and throwing him in a box. <laughs> Which brings me to Pearl figuring out. This motherfucker been lying this whole damn time. Mm. Just biding his time, absolutely just waiting for his <laughs> moment to leave. Mm. <laughs> I know she was upset when she came in there and saw that prosthetic. She said, oh. <laughs> I wanted to talk about that scene, though, because she goes through the flashbacks of them, of him coming mm-hmm. to her door, asking to save someone, which that should have sent the red flag off one. Mm-hmm. Because what do you mean? She saved you. She saved like, you. Like, who I'm is this who you, is the friend that you've you. met on day one? Like, I'm telling not- you, I saved you that time. And you're like, you didn't save me. Mm-hmm. And now immediately you meet some random woman in the damn woods. And you're like, she saved me. And then you come back again. Oh, she saved me again. Like, let me tell you about the... Um, remember Dana? Right. <laughs> like, like, let's not pay attention to the helicopters that keep crashing every time we meet. <laughs> let's focus on that. <laughs> 
<laughs> he, was like, he was like, don't worry about that. Like, don't worry actually, about that. This is this is my friend Dana. I know I haven't talked to anyone in years, but this stranger, this is this is this is actually someone yeah. that I'm going to vouch for and that I need you also to vouch for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was so Look, serious. And so even though I'm so excited about this woman and she kept saving me and I had to tell you repeatedly that she kept saving me because I was so happy she died and I'm just fine. Yeah, and fine. did you see how he was acting in episode three too when Pro was like, <laughs> Oh no, this is like what like when Pro was about to to kill her, Rick was frantic. Well, he's like, oh, well, maybe she's not ready yet. You know, I'll send her back to the to, <laughs> to the calling. Like, you don't see him panicking. You don't see him flailing. He shouldn't give. He shouldn't really care. But yet here he is, breathing heavy, sweating because you're you are you're talking kind of crazy about her right now. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. because that the time been- that Rick has been in the CRM and you're doing these missions or whatever other things that you went out. With, there had to have been other soldiers that assisted you in situations. Right. So for you to automatically with this woman just jump straight to like, she saved my life and she saved my life again. And (laughs) like, I be talking to her and you know, remember I didn't talk to anybody for like years. Right. Like me and her be chatting it up. Put that shit together instantly. See, maybe, uh, maybe Esteban is an A because Esteban would have (laughs) peeped. You mean she saved you? Who's Dana? Like, he he was like, Dana, like that. I've been sitting on this bench with you for two years <laughs> and you ain't talked to me. But now since some woman Dana showed up and now you talking about he would have immediately <laughs> peep game. Shout out to Esteban and you, you know, over here getting her food out her who first week us. on the job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anybody who listened to our spaces and heard my terrible theory that has been <laughs> I was going to be a part of helping. I just knew Esteban and Cleo had a purpose. I just knew it. I said, yeah, we waiting on a moment. But it's okay. Maybe there's a moment for that, but it's in, it's in the DVDs. But I mean, it's in the DVDs. Scotty G said it best. He was like, you know, the show's, the focus was Rick and Michonne. So yes, mm-hmm. we did create these fantastic characters. Thanks for loving them. But the show is about Rick and Michonne. Exactly. I was just about to say... I just knew, I just knew he helped. I like that. I don't have to worry about all these extra characters now. There is, there's not a bunch of loose ends in a show. All I, ha- I got my, I got the happy ending. Yeah, yeah. And I, all the characters that needed to survive to the end survived to the end because then what? Like, say Nat and Oakford and all of them do did survive. Then what? Mm-hmm. Right. You know. So it was very. It, they served their purpose. They're, they, they, they. they helped our main characters along on their journey the best that they could yeah. and all of them provided valuable lessons for them so I, I, guess. I you know I got the point of them and I loved them and I was sad to see them go but you know yeah. in, the, in the interest of the show I think it worked out perfectly I think mm-hmm. they I think they did that really really good even Beale like everyone just nice and, yeah. <laughs> nice and tight. well fleshed out yeah gave you the no, death not a bunch of them. Yeah, not a bunch of, oh, what about this person? What about this person? It's, you know, it's... Mm-hmm. Everything has a, a nice, concise ending to it, and I actually really enjoyed that, that I'm not left with a bunch of questions at the end, because they, they do a really good job, even with things in the background, little things heard over, um, little pieces in people's conversations, things heard on the radio, things on the TV. It really ties stuff together, and if you're paying attention, if you're actually, you know, watching the show, if you gotta watch, maybe you have to watch it more than once, which Who's not going to rewatch this show more than once? It's one of the most rewatchable shows I think I've seen thus far. So you're going to get They put every piece together there for you. If you care, it's very easy to put together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you care. (laughs) That's what the, that's, you know, the response to the people like it, it felt rushed. And I'm like, no, I feel like the first time you watch it, you're so stressed. Mm-hmm. that you are maybe missing things that first time. Mm-hmm. So when you watch it that second time, that's when it slows down and you're like, oh, okay. Exactly. Here's all these pieces that I maybe didn't catch the first time or I didn't get enough time to absorb them or, or process them. Or they never watched Fear and World Beyond and so they're feeling like they're right. missing things about the CRM that maybe were shown in those other shows mm-hmm. that we understand better because we've seen them. Yeah. Right. Because right. a lot of people did not watch that or relied on snippets or maybe YouTube um, recaps which so in some cases work but sometimes especially if it's something that you're super worried about and super focused on 
Mm -hmm. I would hope that you're going to go back and do the work if you want to know about the CRM because they definitely gave you a lot on them, you know? Yeah. And I I just, I can't think of one scene in that, in the finale that I would take out to replace with more CRM uh, character building. I can't think of a single scene. Mm -hmm. So that right there lets me know that it, it wasn't rushed. Everything was there. Was everything that was there that was needed to be, to be there? And honestly, I can't really think of anything that I would need to add. Yeah, because okay, we don't need a montage of Rick and Michonne going back to the CRP and getting their property right. and then flying. We didn't right. need that scene no. like that in in season eleven, where we see what happens when things switch over and mm-hmm. everything is brought to the community. We've we've gotten a scene like mm-hmm. that before. Mm-hmm. You know, we know like the song and dance for that. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see them go home. And, and that's think, what they gave us. I think they're under the completely incorrect impression that the CRM is done, that, that Rick and Michonne took out the whole CRM. Yeah, Number no. one, there's CRM and CRP. Mm-hmm. Right. CRP has way more people in it because that's the actual city mm-hmm. than the CRM. And then in the CRM, you have the CRM and you have the red stripes. Yeah. So the red stripes and higher ups that would have gotten the echelon briefing, those are the people that got killed. Killed, yeah. There's still a lot of people out there that belong to the military and live in the city. Very mm-hmm. much. So, and they say in the voiceover that we hear mm-hmm. that they kind of like went through those people and vetted them to see that they had no involvement in the echelon brief and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so they're allowing them to, to remain and all right. that. With majority gone, why wouldn't like with majority gone, it'd be very easy to weed out the refu- remaining few that weren't at that summit. Very easy. Mm-hmm. So. so one thing that I'm going to go ahead and say probably the Dead City writers kind of messed up on is we know this is either happening in tandem or very close in the timeline to Daryl going to France, right? Yeah. So right, Daryl was gone, of course, before they would have gotten back, but Maggie would have still been around to receive the assistance that the CRM is now providing that we saw them flying things to Alexandria. So we then didn't. it still makes me feel like, you know, like why would she have needed to move far away when the hilltop mm-hmm. is, it was just something that made me think of like, yeah, no, that's a big question mark actually. Mm-hmm. Because what happened that like, we do know that Maggie moves around a lot, like because of her time with Georgie, she goes from community to community. Well, mm-hmm. she was doing that with Georgie. I'm not sure if she kept it up after, but she is very, um, inclined to move around a lot but her ending up on a journey to new york in the new community she was with i'm wondering what led her there mm-hmm. and it seemed like she was there because that is that that's where she goes back at the end of that um uh yeah. that, that scene, to the right? her, that. Yeah. so this is obviously her home now so i'm wondering i mean what especially with the civic republic as big as it is with all of the things that it is why not live there yeah. Or the Commonwealth okay. or Alexandria or, you know? Yeah. Because I was wondering also that it could be that, um, that you know, Hilltop, you know, held too much pain for her. And right. they try to rebuild it. It could be like this. It was too much for her to try to get that back together. So it was like, let me just go someplace else, start a new community there. Right. Because that's um, what she did right after Glenn left is she went to Hilltop and stayed there. Yeah. So that is that is pretty much her MO is to remove yeah. herself from traumatic mm-hmm. um, uh settings where she maybe when she experienced bad things happen to her. So that's actually yeah, that's on brand. Yeah. Damn. So and I, I'm I would, wondering. I would hope, sorry, um yeah, that don't. Alexandria, you know sorry, bus gone by. Um I would hope that Alexandria also would have um, provided them with the information that Georgie gave them so that they can start growing more crops and mm-hmm. putting up the windmills and stuff like that because... Right. They did take a beating after Alpha mm-hmm. um, was taking down their walls and destroying their food and infiltrating them because did 
they oh right they have Yumiko's brother so they do have a doctor okay cool sorry I was just wondering like dang do we ever get a doctor back after Sadiq but we <laughs> Right. Yeah, the doctors be going down. down. The doctors is always in short <laughs> supply out there. They, you would think that someone would be like, mm, let's actually protect the doctors regardless. You would the think. knowledge alone is worth more than any beast. But if I tried to be on the show and they was like, yeah, we're going to make you doctor such and such, I'd be like, come oh, on, man. Oh, no. <laughs> come on, man. Oh, so I'm out of here then, is what you're saying. I'm out of here. Like, so just go ahead and fit me for the prosthetic eyes for when I become a walker. Like, let's just do it. Just <laughs> right, do it right, right. I'm going to let y'all know now I'm not good with contact, so we're going to have to yeah. <laughs> Somebody got to hold you down and fight it in the sky. <laughs> I'm telling you, the way you'd have to hold me down like Bird Box and peel my eyes open. <laughs> you can't do it. Also, people were like, um, like, you know how Michonne called Judith over to walkie. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make it clear that was not the first walkie call between them. Yeah. Right. That was her letting her know she's close and to make sure right. the chicken was out. Thank freezer. you. Please be serious. Please. This is when your mother calls you and says, I'm on, I'm almost to the house. Come yep. outside. Make sure that top box is undone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> get ready to come outside, help with the groceries. I'm mm-hmm. on the way back to the house. Help like, with the I don't groceries know just triggered me. It made me want to go look for my slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Because no, that was literally what that was. You saw Judith waiting. She was yeah, literally sitting yeah. there with the walkie doing nothing. She was waiting. She was like, oh, they're here. And then here they come running. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely, they've been chatting. They've been yeah. communicating once it was safe. Because think about it. The see that they probably had way, a bunch of better ways to communicate once it was safe to. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They were probably, especially because those are the same old, those are the same walkies that Shane and Rick had, right? Those are the ones that got passed down, passed down, passed down, or all those different walkies? No, I think they were different walkies because remember in um, World Beyond, remember they were communicating with Portland, which is all the way across the country. And remember what they, their claim was that the reason that they weren't able to get the messages through to Omaha was because there was some scrambling of the, the system or some crap like that. Mm-hmm. So they would have been able to, once they decided to, you know, take those, put the comms back up, they would have been able to message Alexandria, no problem, mm-hmm. or um, the Commonwealth. Where that was for, all right, for me, that was the only question that was like, where are they? I feel like they were at the Commonwealth. I feel like Judith really liked it there. She made friends there. She wanted her and RJ to continue to go to school. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I they think did that once one. Michonne was like, "Hey, Shoto." Judith was like, RJ, pack your shit right now. Let's go. <laughs> and they went back to Alexandria to wait yeah. for their parents to get home. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. Again, remember when we were trying to figure out where, um, whether it's like in the comics that they're in Ohio. Mm, yeah. For the I Commonwealth. Didn't... Because Ohio and Philly aren't that far away from each other. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing that was throwing me off. And... You know, even, I don't know, just in my head, like, seeing Judith sitting on the steps, that little tiny glimpse of the steps gave me, like, Alexandria steps. Oh, yeah, I thought they were Alexandria <laughs> I thought steps, they, too. It, it looked like they were at the steps at their house, no? Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Like, those townhouse yeah. steps. That's what it gave me in my head. So it was like, okay, do the kids leave the CW and go back to Alexandria because they know their parents are coming back there to get them? Or... Because that was Alexandria at the end, right? Of season of the season finale, series finale. Excuse me, when they were looking up, because I saw the um, windmill in the background. Oh no, they're they were they were, that, I, they, I were feel, the I they were at the Commonwealth at the end. Yeah, they're yeah. at the Commonwealth. Oh, it was Aaron and the yeah, and Aaron yeah, and yeah. Game yeah. for now yeah, Alexandria. I was like, I could have sworn I saw Alexandria at the end of that, but that was that was um uh that was definitely Aaron. Yeah, uh, Maggie at, or whoever that was at the uh, at Alexandria at the end because I remember they showed all the uh, different places. Sorry, Apologies. yeah. So that's what in my head that was the only question for me. It was like, where is the family at exactly? Right. I feel like Rick and I feel like Rick and Michonne. That's why I was gonna say when it came to like the supplies and things that that gave a question because to me it would be that Rick and Michonne would want to go back to their community. Mm-hmm. They would go back to Alexandria with their kids. And be like, hey, we're just going to build up our community back here. Mm-hmm. Rick is going to want to go to Carl's grave. Like, all of that's back there. Yeah. He's going to want to stay where his son is buried. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's why I was feeling that they were back there in Alexandria. Um, so then, yeah, we're like, yeah, bring us some supplies. Yeah. And so we I can feel like they was like, they trashed the place. We need mm-hmm. help. <laughs> yeah. It was like, you could drop some things off, you know, to whatever's left here and stuff. But obviously, then Hilltop and um, Kingdom are gone. So right. it was like, okay, you're dropping those supplies to us in Alexandria. So it's like, yeah, our community is still thriving. So we get to that. Oh, okay. So, so this, I don't know how it works. It's it always says that I get two hours free with this free Riverside thing, mm-hmm. and I've gone a little bit over two hours before, and it didn't say anything. But I get nervous, and we got we're at like an hour and forty five right now. So okay. I just wanted to tell y'all that we're getting. Close. Oh, that's what that is. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're pretty much at the end anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I cracked up. When they showed them damn boots on his feet, because oh. I'm like, did he really put them raggedy ass boots on his feet? Those boots have been literally through hell and back. Mm-hmm. Like, please, please put them down. Like they were, he they had to put the- them boots back on because you know why? Because his baby brought them to him. Yeah, right. She did find them and bring them back, but golly, yeah. those bags was about to crumble right off his. <laughs> And that's another thing. Why would we need to see them go back and get their stuff? We saw her katana on her back. We saw him right. on his feet. Like, we his know they went back. Yeah. The so things we know. were retrieved. Come on. Yeah. So must that and be and he's not flying. Back? We're, we're in a, um, one of the, the larger um, aircrafts. So we know that... And we see them sitting next to each other holding hands. So we know that they're not piloting it. So if someone right. else is, you know, you don't need all of those little pieces. And then again, right. the voiceover tells you all of the connecting pieces that you need it for that. Exactly. It gives you all of the, it gives you all of the little tidbits that you need to put together where you're about to go with this scene. Mm-hmm. It's extremely, again, easy to put together if you care. Yeah. And I feel like <laughs> if they showed us anything at all at the CRM, it just would have been, the people asking them if they could leave. Yeah, exactly. Because that's probably yeah. everyone's question is, uh, can we leave? Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. we still prisoners? Well, not prisoners, but we still stuck here. Mm-hmm. And they and they answered that. They said, everyone is now free to leave yeah. and come as they please. Yeah. And we will help people and fly them in and whatever. Like, they mm-hmm. again, explain all of this. Yeah. So I'm not sure. What I was like, I, we didn't need like one of those corny like scenes of like Rick and Michonne getting back there, and then the the people all around them like, "Yay, applauding right. them!" And like, "Oh my God, you set us!" For-. We didn't need that. We didn't need that. Rick would have been uncomfortable as hell. Michonne would have yeah. been. It would have been. Funny we got because- that type of scene before. We've seen that on The Walking Dead. It would have yeah. been. It would have been something that was redone because we, yeah. we we literally just got that at the end of the at the series finale. Mm-hmm. We watched them like if we had, a, you know, it would have like, been funny for us to see like another little like the famous Rick Grimes. <laughs> right, right, Rick Grimes is here. <laughs> <laughs> we would have laughed at that, but it would have been like, like you said, it wasn't necessary to have that in there. Exactly, it was saving. We they knew again what we wanted to see, and we wanted to see that family come uh, be reunited, and that's what they spent the time on. And I'm, I it was the scene was just long enough. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. It was literal. Mm-hmm. It was perfect. You could go anywhere with that ending. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Kaylee and Anthony for yeah. helping make right. this a Shout perfect out to- ending. Yeah. And shout out to whoever decided to turn down them fans because those babies were struggling. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if y'all don't just turn it down a notch, please, you don't see that you're about to get blown into the or into orbit. <laughs> they're, they're running against that wind. Those poor child. But wait, not Andy being jealous that the kids is being blown around. <laughs> now he tried to recreate it, sir. Now you know dang well that you are not a you are not going airborne off of those fans. Like, like, <laughs> Let us let's be for real. Like we, he was having a blast. Mm-hmm. You know who wasn't playing in those fans? Deny <laughs> <laughs> because she's not trying to have her eyes all dry, exactly. all types right. of dander blown up, blown into her nostrils. Absolutely not. Because imagine that they're around grass. So I would have been a sneezing mess. All of those fans just blowing around grass. <laughs> My day was over before it started. 
Oh my god. I did feel like also like the kids were like let's find our nicest clothes and like Didn't they dress? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they dressed. They was not looking again. Yulin. Yulin. Ate down as usual, mm-hmm. even dressing dressing the children. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It was like Yulin. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> that- the keeping that hat going strong after a ha- X amount of seasons, poor hat. Mm-hmm. I, that, that hat and those boots, I'm telling you, yeah. literally older, like literally older than RJ himself. Right. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Ooh, older than Kaylee. Like those. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm older than Judith. Those. Those are yeah. some antiques, and they looked good. Like the hat was still. Yeah. Had- yeah, the outfit like they mm-hmm. looked so cute, and Kaylee looked so. Ad- she still looks so young. I have no idea how old she was when she shot that, and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I have no clue. Right. It looked like almost no time had passed since the finale, which. Yeah. You know that that's what was I said when you see obviously when you go back and you watch nine nine the end of nine five. Oh, you're yeah. like oh yeah yeah. But she, in your head, she's still so tiny. Yeah. And just like, oh, he still looked so young, and I saw a picture of her prom. I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, she's in, she's she's almost a grown up now." But right. you know, they, for, maybe they I don't know when they shot that, but mm-hmm. you know, time was on their side for that because they both look still looked extremely young and like they didn't miss much, which was really I was scared for them. Like, please don't let them come back to two teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> but they, did. you know, they see they he, RJ is still very much not a baby but he's Mm -hmm. young still so rick has got plenty of time to get to know him and to train him and to just Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know i was like i love that because you know some of us we had like a worry of whether they were gonna you know swap the the kids out oh i was so scared time difference so it was like thank god it was perfect and again like we know that dead city's time is you know in the future so that if we get a season two or we get a Walking Dead movie or something like that, Kaylee and Anthony could still play the kids because they will right. age in that time and mm-hmm. it will still match right up. Right. So, and uh, they always- also, yeah. just real quick, please watch Kaylee's movie If. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's coming out at the end of this month. No, okay. it's. Then what the? Oh no, that's imaginary. That's what it is. That's what I watched. Yes. Yeah. 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 That movie um, was. It was cute. It's good. I want a really cute movie. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. And- Kelly. Kelly is like. Um, Kelly is like John Berthall. She keep a job. That oh yeah. Keep a job. <laughs> Not never played. One thing about John and Kaylee, they gonna work. They oh, gonna speaking work. of Johnny B, Pass. there were some <laughs> photos released of him and Charlie Cox recording for Daredevil, or mm-hmm. is it Daredevil they're yeah. recording for? Okay, yeah. Oh, I got and I'm super excited. Last, mm-hmm. you know, the last person I saw play Daredevil was Ben Affleck. So y'all about to eat me up real bad. Wait, what? no, 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 no. You need to go watch Daredevil yeah, on you gotta watch Netflix Daredevil. right now. <laughs> Yes. I'm so sorry. But yeah. Oh wait, no, I'm lying. Because wait, is the guy who uh, it was the guy who played Daredevil in Spider Man? Yeah, that... he plays the, the the attorney. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. I loved it. Yes. I loved it. Yes. I was like, is that Daredevil? Is it who's this blonde yeah. boy? Is this him? Is this him? Did, did it, are they sliding him in like they did? Like you know how Marvel does when they slide people in. Yeah. I was like, are they doing a slide in? I loved that because yeah. like I said, the last person I seen play Daredevil was Ben freaking Affleck. So I was <laughs> I was gagging when I saw that in Spider Man. I haven't the last Marvel yeah, movie. Yeah, and then She Hulk like, also. Daredevil is like my favorite Marvel TV show. Probably. The last one I watched, I think, was Jessica Jones. I gotta get back in. I'm, I like. Oh, I did okay. like, watch Luke Cage and um, uh, was Iron, it? Fist. Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah. That's what I watched. Punisher I was my favorite. Punisher had me. Oh yeah, I love the Punisher. Had dude. me begging for episodes, like I adjusting the work schedule. Like oh, I got to be home when this episode <laughs> comes on because I'm so in. I can't wait. It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. But again, yeah, that's why John B. keep a job. I was just about to say, don't he Kelly keep a job? Kelly is coming for him. She keeps a job, and I'm so happy for her also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out to their agents, because they never played. 
Mm hmm. Right. Well, I guess we can do our first, we'll do the ratings for episode six. Then we'll do the ratings for this season overall. And then we can do our order, our episode okay. order. Okay. Um, so I give, so episode, I, I give episode six a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I'm sorry, um, that's a 10 out of 10. Okay, so out of yeah. ten. Okay, because there's not one single scene that I would take out. There's nothing I would add. Mm-hmm. That was a full, full, well-rounded episode. That's a ten out of ten for me. Definitely, same, same ten. Um, for the series, same. Like same, same. Yeah. It's a hundred out of ten. ten. Like because I've the level just on every front. There, they never, they didn't lack anywhere. They didn't lack in hair and makeup. They didn't lack in wardrobe. Not on lighting. Not not on dialogue everything is beautiful with this show mm-hmm. everything is beautiful. every episode feels like it could stand alone mm-hmm. every single it's... episode is different i yeah. feel i find myself like what mood am i in today am i feeling yes. like one? am i feeling like four am mm-hmm. i feeling like, like i can based on how i feel is how i'm is i can pick an episode off of that yeah it could just be a little movie for me i'm like and every time at the end of the episode i'm like oh i gotta cut the next one on and I mm-hmm. watching it every time, whether I have six hours to kill or not. Yeah. Whether I have six hours or not, I'm watching that full show. Mm-hmm. And that is rare that I've rewatched a show so many times. I haven't even done that with the flag <clears throat> show. Like we watched it a bunch of time, of uh, times. But the the urge to go back and watch six episodes back to back like that is saying something because usually it's seasons 13 episodes 16 episodes 24 episodes these aren't you know there's not short seasons mm-hmm. so to, to be able to watch six episodes back to back and it not feel repetitive or it not feel like a chore that rewatchability yeah. factor is like you said that out of this world. with with the flagship show i've watched that too many damn oh, yeah. times to count oh yeah it's on but, right now but with this, like you said, when you watch the first one, when you watch the, the original show, there's definitely, even when you're saying, oh, I'm watching the show from season one all the way to 11, like there's definitely episodes where you're like, oh, I could go to the bathroom right now. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. I can go make me something to eat right now. Mm-hmm. I, can go- I stood up all the yeah. episodes re- during a rewatch because I was about, I was going to go downstairs to grab a snack. Don't you know I stood in that same spot for 45 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, exactly miss- oh no, she about to now she about to eat them up right here. Oh nope, they they about to get crazy right here. Oh, I- yes. there was never a minute where I could actually leave the room. I mm-hmm. might have thirty, I might have five seconds of a transition. I had from when because I couldn't even leave the room when the helicopter um, <laughs> flew into the frame. Couldn't even leave that. Mm-hmm. It was ridiculous when they were when the building was collapsing. I was like, nope, because they're looking at each other here. I can't miss that. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I was like. That's the thing about this is like. Every moment of the six episodes, you're like, I have to digest this. Like, I mm-hmm. can't step away from this because there's pertinent information being delivered at every second in this. And I need to I need to watch this. Like, I can't run to the bathroom. I can't do none of the things. Like, I can't do any of the things. Like, I have you to can't, get in this. You can't do anything. Yeah. You literally are stuck from the from the beginning till the end, the whole episode, the whole mm-hmm. series. Yeah. It's 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 every time AMC Plus plays it at like randomly on one of their live channels, I say, oh, well there goes my day. <laughs> <laughs> because once I start, I'm not gonna be able to stop. Mm-hmm. I remember um Pluto played the first episode over and over and I was like, Oh, I gotta keep watching this episode over and over again and I'm not gonna be able to stop. I have to wait for them to play something else because it's addicting between the soundtrack and then just visually looking at it. It's just mm-hmm. it, you can't tear your eyes from it. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's rare in TV now. It's a lot of times people put on TV just to have background noise. You know what I'm saying? Just to not be alone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The TV will just be on and it'll be there. So to really be drawn in by the TV when you have like a little device in your hand that's constantly begging for your mm-hmm. attention, you know, that says a lot. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for the series, 10 out of 10 for the mm-hmm. episode. Uh, what's my episode rank? Right now I'm at, my rank is four, six. Two, 
five, no, one, five, three, four, six, two, one, five, three. That's my, my ranking. I'm sorry. I'm not an angst girly. I'm so sorry. I'm not, a, I'm not an angst girly. I don't like <laughs> that. That kiss was great, but I am not an angst girly. And you know, my, my little Rashawn heart just barely made it through that episode. Mm -hmm. Just barely. I cheered when they when they jumped out the helicopter because like finally some sense. She's putting some sense into him. <laughs> terrible. They are. This is so bad. They are suffering. They are going through it. I can't. That episode was heart wrenching for me to watch. Mm -hmm. But uh, four is gonna take it. Oh, deny. What a writer. Yeah, I think mine. Now I literally just did this earlier. Watch it be different this time. Four. Six two. Okay, as you should. Ooh, I know this is tearing you up. <laughs> okay, four, six, two, I'm in three. Your <laughs> I'm not in your business. One, five? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Four, okay. six, two, three, one, five. Okay. I guess that's I where I'll, that. I, I guess that's I where I, I know I know what puts at episode five at the at the bottom for a lot of people. I have I have bias. Joy, you know what my bias is for episode five and why it's gonna go up higher. <laughs> so um because episode five takes place in a very magical place for me. So yeah. I, I, I was I like to... for me too, but I'm still like <sighs> and that and I'm not really like I like even reading angst, I'm like, oh, let me scroll faster. This is hurt. This is hurting. <laughs> So I, I, but I see that though. I definitely see that. That's really, that's actually valid. That's really valid. I'm just, I'm weak. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. So mines are, we all start off the same. Four, six, four, two. Yeah. <laughs> We're all four, six, two. Four, six, two. Um, for me, depending on the mood I'm in, six mm -hmm. and two could swap. Yeah. 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 Depending on the mood I'm in. Mm -hmm. Whether I want something triumphant that day or whether I want something that's just going to be like having me at the edge of my seat and oh, then... Like, like, do, do I feel like watching the whole thing over again? Do I have time for that? Or because sometimes if I just watch Six Alone, I can kind of mm -hmm. go over my day. But if I start at two, I'm watching that whole bad boy. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So. so. But usually it's four, okay. six, two. And then it's one, three, five. One three five for me. Okay. Okay. Also, y'all are y'all are um you and um Kira are on um the same level on the same level. I it's just it's just my weakness. I can't handle angst too much. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I'm so sorry. I was like one. I don't me, like because you know that. again it's always gonna be like that. You know, Rick is back. Like he's back. I was just about to say that opening sequence is gonna have me in a headlock every single time because between yeah. the music. The, the the just the opening on the back and we all know who that is like they didn't even have to tell us like oh, Rick mm -hmm. like, and it's very seldom that you can just identify a character off his back mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying power um episode one just set the tone and you meet Joy we saw it live like we sat there and just watched we saw the whole audience the audience was gagging at that that opening <laughs> like that yeah. opening and that closing had the had the audience absolutely gagging as they should have been and. Mm -hmm. They knew what they were doing with that first episode. Yeah. Very much so. You know, for me, it's always going to be that, um, the CRM training <laughs> montage. Oh, we um, love the training montage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we give these ratings, and I say we because I'm pretty sure we all feel the same way. We give these ratings, but want you to understand, they're, like, all on equal footing. The, yeah. oh, right. You know, this like. None this of is them are bad of. episodes. Exactly. Yeah. This is, you know, this is because, you know, everyone wants a ranking. But when I tell you every last one of these is equal and you can't have one episode without the other, mm -hmm. um, when in terms of watching it, like you have to keep watching. Yeah. There is no, oh, I can just watch this one episode and that's it. That, mm -hmm. that doesn't exist in the show. You've got to watch them all and you want to watch them all. Yeah. You know, it's not one of those things where you have to force yourself to get through an episode so that you can watch another one. That's not here. Like you accidentally start the wrong episode and you're scrambling to go back to see what you missed because mm -hmm. they're because there'll be those moments where you're like oh like oh i'm watching this one and you're like oh wait wait that happened in the the thing that i want to see happen in the episode right. before that oh oh wait a minute let me go back <laughs> it's AMC, like let me go back let me go back let me start that, that other one in six parts 
It's, it's like, you know, when you watch a movie on YouTube and it's like in a bunch of parts and you got to and um, you got to keep scrolling to the next movie and you mm-hmm. actually skip skip a part. That's what this is like. This is like a feature. This is a film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A movie. We got lucky. And instead of getting, you know, two hours or, you know, two hours, 15 or 90 minutes, we got almost six, six hours. Mm-hmm. And, and we didn't have to wait. We didn't have to wait a year and change <laughs> right. in between each movie. And we got we would have movie we got the soundtrack of a movie mm-hmm. we got everything we got every, all the good parts of a movie without having to without all of the drama of a movie and mm-hmm. all of the waiting and all of the um the you know everything that comes with that we just got a show that we have forever yeah. that we can watch and, and just there's so much to be done we're, we're, this is just the tip of the iceberg with the show releasing it was just the, it was just the tip releasing it was just the beginning like now look what we've done with the flagship show up of someone did a count of all their kisses they kissed what 40 50 times in the main series and mm-hmm. they broke a hundred <laughs> they broke a hundred mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in just six little episodes like mm-hmm. we've got a lot to discuss mm-hmm. yeah and it's things that people are going to notice months from now years from now we're yeah. going to be picking up stuff from this because that's how scott and deny and andy are like they thought this out for years. It's going to take us years to 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 dissect it and break it down just the same way, it, mm-hmm. just as long as it took them to build it up. Yeah. And then you once it's it. broken down and dissected, then you start combining the pieces with the, the, the crumbs they gave us from World Beyond and Fear. Yeah, these are and... people who have watched all the other shows, yeah. written the other shows. Like Scott has had his hand everywhere in this in this universe and best believe he's put the crumbs in there the breadcrumbs in there for yeah. us and we just have to watch it as he knows that we will repeatedly <laughs> and someone's going to catch it because there's a lot of eyes on it and we you know we have some people in our fandom that are going to catch it and whatever we don't see they're going to see whatever they don't see we're mm-hmm. going to see mm-hmm. and it's always so fun to compare notes <laughs> it's always a blast yeah well <clears throat> I think that we did a pretty great job for our first time running through the podcast together. Um, that was fun. As everyone knows, The Ones Who Live is over for now. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Part of us hopes that they leave the Grimes family the hell alone. <laughs> the other part of us wants to see them again, of course. Who knows? But one thing that we know for sure is that Noir and Nerdy will be the next podcast covering The Walking Dead shows and beyond. Mm -hmm. So for those of you listening, if you like what you heard, head over to Noir and Nerdy. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. And very, very soon... We will be on Spotify and Apple and YouTube. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to be discussing, so it won't just be um, the Walking Dead universe. We're going to go outside of that. So Interview with a Vampire is coming. We're going to be covering season two of that. Mm -hmm. We're kind of going to give a little recap of um, season one. Mm -hmm. And we're probably going to do a recap of the ones who live because we just can't help ourselves also. (laughs) Um, (laughs) For anybody who's going to come in after, you know, because everybody's not like us who wasn't on top of this the moment it it came out. There's going to be people who are going to be discovering this show for time to come. So we'll have content up for that as well. And um, we're going to probably cover um, Found Season 2 when that comes out. And we're going to look at some other shows. and we've also had um, an idea or some suggestions from people that we're going to actually go back and look at some old cinema, um, old films, old TV, um, and see how they stand up to today. Like, you know, it was uh, Love and Basketball just full struggle love that we just had to accept because that's all we could get back then? Right. Probably. Modern <laughs> conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like we're gonna look at Love Jones. Yes, we're gonna absolutely look at Love Jones because did he treat cheat on Nina and prompt that? I feel like he cheated, and that's why <laughs> Nina had to go to her. But we, we'll discuss those things. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank so we'll you have- so much for tuning in. Um, 
thank you two lovely ladies for coming and covering the final episode of the podcast with me. Um, the podcast will still be available for you to listen to, and you never know when a little bonus episode might pop up. But um, if you want some steady, why is the word not coming into my head? <laughs> Content? content yes if you want some steady content um then you will be getting that from us weekly starting soon yes and of course we're going to be active on twitter every day as usual yeah. because that is where we started and that's where we hear the most from you and get to interact with you most um firsthand so obviously they're every day <laughs> and as news comes out about shows and filming and all types of things like that we'll also be posting that with tags you know for people who do not want to be spoiled but um mm -hmm. you'll definitely definitely this is not even close to the end there's further analysis coming all types of stuff we are because this is, like, this is just the beginning of the ones who live. <laughs> yeah so much it's for, and it's the beginning of noir and nerdy absolutely Ain't it? So we just want to say we also appreciate anybody who had been there for our spaces, mm -hmm. visited our website, mm -hmm. um, the growth that we got in this this short amount of time was is awesome. We didn't expect it, and it's just been amazing to be in these spaces with. It has been such a fun. Yeah, it's been a, such a fun. A fun ride. I was found myself every week w looking forward to Sunday night to sit and listen mm -hmm. to everyone. It was sh like I'm so feel so lucky to be mm -hmm. here in the fandom at, at a time like this. Just complete, just a complete perfect timing of events. Loved it, and to be able to create a sisterhood amongst ourselves, right? Was because the way just... we show up for each other is unreal. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that's like there's for complete strangers and it's just hundreds of us just supporting each other supporting each other looking out for each other it's so beautiful so okay. thank you so much we appreciate you all we will see you on twitter we will see you on all the socials and you will be hearing from us very soon bye <laughs>